In Los Angeles, we do a lot of driving. It's early morning, late spring, 1975. I hop on my jeton and race off to Roberta Lewin's house, which sits on a 17th of an acre just across the street from Westwood Junior High, where she and I will be attending eighth grade in the fall. Roberta's my girlfriend, but to use the word friend might be stretching the point, because in fact it seems we have very little in common, save for a mutual and powerfully budding interest in all things amorous. I can feel the wind on my face and a warm sun that's just waking up to its potential to heat the day beyond anyone's expectations. As I glide into the Lewin's driveway, I'm overcome with a quiet prayer which goes something like this. O oh God, in your majesty and in your heavenly grandeur, please align the stars and all the intervening celestial bodies in such a way as to make it possible for Roberta's parents to be gone this morning. Please make it so that Mr. Lewin, who's been only partially employed of late and can often be seen sitting in his den watching MASH, is out for the whole day looking for work. And could you, in your infinite kindness and wisdom, please make it so Mrs. Lewin is somewhere far off doing multiple and highly complicated errands. And as I knock on the front door and Roberta answers it, wearing only her bikini with red and white heart patterns, I'm convinced that God has answered my prayers. Eating the sliced ham sandwich that she has prepared for me, it dawns on me only briefly that she and I share very little in common. We don't share a passion for, say, photography or stamp collecting. Even the few times we've gone to the movies together can't truly be counted as she and I were involved in activities that precluded any attention to the film itself. But still, I do enjoy Roberta's company, and what's more, I truly enjoy what she has barely hidden behind her bathing suit. After the sandwich, it's decided that she and I will go out to her backyard and work on our suntans, a pastime that in and of itself holds very little attraction for me, save for the notion that I soon may find myself putting suntan lotion on the hard-to-reach parts of Roberta. Soon I'm doing just that, and after suggesting to her that she might look more attractive without any tan lines, I'm now protecting all of her with copper tone. Under a burning sun and girded by the knowledge that Mr. and Mrs. Lewin are absent, I take the liberty of placing Roberta's right nipple between my lips. Though soon after I do this, I hear a pounding sound, very like thunder, only closer and not quite as deep. I look up and with my mouth still latched onto Roberta's chest, I see Mr. Lewin furiously pounding on the big picture window which looks out onto the Lewin backyard. He gestures at us with a flailing of hands. In his eyes, one can see the particular horror which befits any father at such moments. I slink off and away from his daughter, Roberta, feeling very much like a slug, a nightcrawler, or a snail.